Our next guest comes from a company with similarly lofty ambitions that I think we can all appreciate. Zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion. Please welcome Niall Sheehan, Senior Digital Transformation Leader at General Motors. Good morning. It's great to be here. My name is Niall Sheehan. I've had the good fortune of leading the launch and the evolution of the GM private cloud. We at GM are in the midst of a complete transformation in the way value is created, delivered, and consumed. This quote is quite fitting. GM has been pushing the limits of transportation and technology for over 100 years. And today, we are in the midst of a transportation revolution. Solving the complex transportation challenges of not only today, but tomorrow. We at GM know that software is a, has a key role to play. Software is the differentiator. With that, let's get started. Today, you learn to maximize value with your software development teams by shortening the software supply chain from ideation to deployment, and yet simultaneously innovating faster. Look, it's been written widespread. In today's business environment, speed matters, but velocity matters even more so. As software developers, our ability to rapidly and effectively envision, develop, and deliver technology is crucial to the growth and the end-to-end -end customer experience. But how, as software developers, can we do this? Well, our response is quite simple. By creating the appropriate conditions that simplify the environment and allow developers to be developers. Right? Removing the toil, the unnecessary toil, from the start to the end of the software supply chain. So in 2012, when most of the Fortune 500 companies were hooked on outsourcing, GM actually bucked the trend under the leadership of our Vice President, Randy Mott, and brought all of IT in-house. Reason being is it was a strategic enabler. We moved from, quite a few adjectives here, complex, convoluted, cost prohibitive and highly manual to, and multi-vendor. For example, we moved from 23 data centers to two data centers. That's quite a lot of complexity in play. To what's now a centralized fit for purpose IT organization, being viewed as an IT partner. We stripped away, and you've heard this in a number of speeches, the friction and the noise. And when I say noise, I mean complexity. And laid the pavement that enables our software teams to have the empowerment and the autonomy to be successful. So with that said, in the winning today and tomorrow, I'll walk you through some of the elements of change that we in GM have went through and are still maturing. We're still not there. This is a journey. It's not a destination. You're never done. So first one, on-demand infrastructure. What do I mean by that? That means self-service consumption. That means self-sufficiency. Creating environments as a service. And I can tell you this from experience, it's not just weeks and months when our internal consumers had to experience this, we're down to minutes and hours. But it's not just one service, it's an environment. The purpose really there is to empower the teams and provide a frictionless experience. What's the benefit? The benefit is that there's zero handoffs 
and we're minimizing the number of wastes or non-value-added activities, waiting time within the overall supply chain. Also, it's around simplicity and standardization. Lessons learned on this course that we took was you need a very robust showback model because we've got to be fiscally responsible. In addition to that, you also need a robust decommissioning process as we move forward. So where are we now in terms of that journey? In terms of that journey, we're actually broadening those service offerings and we're harnessing our data assets in, in, in the overall ecosystem and the integration. So next, shift left. And many of the folks in GMIT know this is a term that I like to use quite a lot, is really what you're doing is investing upfront. You're designing in compliance so that you can move faster downstream. What does this give us? Well, there's intangible and tangible benefits to this. It fosters greater collaboration between both the software development and infrastructure teams. Unfortunately, there's that healthy tension sometimes there. And we've got to remove that. We're all one team. That's one of the GM values and behaviors. It's also a paradigm shift for folks. We're creating that one team mindset that we're all in this together. And we're all being measured by this. These practices are gaining a foothold across the organization. And we're now in a position whereby we need to start thinking about doing security and compliance up front the Dev Inc. Ops. So with that said, in terms of product mindset, and this is critical in terms of how we move forward, we need to shift away from a project, it's just a deliverable, to a product mindset. And we've done that across teams. But also, we take into consideration lean product management. We also take into consideration that to ensure that the end user is being represented here. We put the consumer at the epicenter of the products that we bring to market. You also got to think about your go-to-market strategy. What are all the other ancillary activities that you've got to do to improve that consumer experience? Are we there yet? No. Are we on the journey? Yes. Are we willing to improve and listen to folks? Most definitely so. So what we've seen is we're getting greater engagement and involvement from these individuals that are consuming these products, and it's a partnership. It's not that us and them scenario. Okay, so lessons learned. This is not a natural exercise, by no means. One of the things that we're experiencing is that the types of skill sets that you require are pretty unique. So we've got to build that out. We've got to create that framework, that playbook, that enables those folks to be successful. So balanced teams, what do we mean by this? It's a diverse set of skill sets. So you create that healthy tension that you get a different perspective from various angles. And people are open to change. This ensures that we're capturing the user experience up front, not afterwards. And we've seen scenarios where we've done that, particularly in our internal cloud, where we've had to go back and make sure that we embed the usability studies up front. And we've learned, like everybody. So one of the things that we're looking at and we've started to embrace is design thinking, which when you look at all of these components, you can't look at them in isolation. They're all interdependent. The sum of the whole is greater than the parts. And that's really important to understand. And the wrapper around these is that you've got to get senior management or senior executive leadership sponsoring this and actively involved. Otherwise, it's fake. And people can see through that. So CICD, I'll touch on this momentarily. This is coupled with test-driven development. In addition to this, it's automate, automate, automate. Remove the toil. What you'll see is you can't just look at it in isolation. You've got to look at it end to end. You've also got to take into consideration here is that not just putting your app on a platform is going to be the panacea for all ills. If you think that, then this is definitely the conference for you. Right? You've got to modernize your applications to gain the greatest capabilities from it. In addition to that, you've also got to upskill your folks to understand how they can develop those capabilities. Where are we? Again, having those consistent environments is key, critical, 
to ensuring that seamless and that positive experience. So, what I want to do now is just basically talk to you in regards to one case study, for example, First Mile. This organization was formed to help our new business ventures and embrace that lean startup mentality. But we've also taken into consideration that that needs to scale up. This was one of our first tenants on Pivotal. And they've embraced not only the platform, but all of the other characteristics that I spoke about, such as bringing products like Maven, Maven Gig, Book by Cadillac, ERV, e-bike. They've not only looked at the platform, they looked at the end-to-end -end process supply chain, but they've also trained and upskilled their staff, taking into consideration test-driven development, taking into consideration automation, etc. So with that said, Reflections, when you reflect back on this, technology is important, but it's not the end means to an end, right? You've got to take into consideration culture. You've also got to take into consideration the processes and the frameworks by which you look at. In addition to this, cultural mindset shift, this is about the hearts and minds of folks. You can't just tap in and drop something in and expect it to work. It takes time for people to absorb and change and you're changing your work practices. Also, you've got to look at this, what I've said already, alluded to, is you've got to look at it from an end-to-end -end perspective. Simply automate the repetitive not, uh, tasks and enable your teams to be freed from the shackles of repetitive, not necessarily optimizing the overall end-to-end -end supply chain. And then finally, it's a journey, not a destination. Enjoy it. You are going to hit speed bumps along the way. I can tell you, every day, but enjoy it. Be part of that conversation. And then finally, what I'll say to you in this particular piece is, this is our BHAG, our big, hairy, audacious goal, right? And we see that zero crashes, zero emissions, zero congestion. IT has a key role to play in this. The service of things we're looking at, we're also looking at domain-driven design. We're also looking at service mesh. But what I'll say to you is this. You've got to pull everybody together. It's an us conversation. So again, I'm Niall Sheehan. I hope you enjoyed the presentation, and I look forward to seeing you over the course of the next few days. Thank you very much.